here we're going to say let y be what do we want y to be? Say it again. Yes? 4x minus 1 indeed. So then dy will be? You cannot guess. You have to look here. You have to differentiate the function and put the x. For the x indeed. So I need a 4 and a 1 fourth. I cannot just multiply the top by 4 without multiplying the denominator by 4. So now can anyone dictate the new integral? The integral from? dy over y. Perfect. And this is, which function prime is 1 over y? So this is natural log the absolute value of y with one fourth in front and plus a constant c. Excellent. Good, but not good enough. Because I have to go back to the original value. Yes. What is a constant? Uh, all the indefinite integrals um, I have result a family of functions, not just one function. So the c is what changes. So that's how we get the family of functions. So this is exactly what we did here. But now if it's a definite integral, there is no such thing. There is, but it cancels out, basically, when we use the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. So here there is just an, an answer, one number. So I have to go back and replace. So this is 1 fourth natural log, the absolute value of 4x minus 1 plus a constant c. This is the final answer. Any questions? Is this okay? Yes. Question. Yes. How is it that it's 4x minus 1 is 1? Like we just substituted that one. We just chose that. We just chose that. So what if it was two equations? Or like not numerator type equations? Like not uh, you have to give me an example. I can't give a recipe. Okay. Yeah, it depends on the problem. Okay. Because it may have, it's a, actually it's a very good question. Uh, it may have um, the derivative of the denominator in the numerator. So I don't know. I have to look at it. Hold on one second, Jerry. One second. So for all the uh, indefinite ones, you have to add the same variable. The answer is a, func a family of functions for all indefinite. Yes, for definite, it's always a number. Yes, Vanessa. Sorry. Okay. So definite integral has limits of integration. That's the name. If it has limits of integration, the answer will always be a number, and it's called a definite integral. It's definite. If it has the sort of roots The limits of integration. Okay. Yes, lower limit and the upper limit. If it does not have limits of integration, it's called indefinite. And the answer will be a function. If I'm given information about C, and if I'm not given information about C, it will be a family of functions. You understand that this is an infinitely many number, a number of functions. Mm -hmm. For any C, I can create another one. Okay. Um, my original question was, yes. Um, so I see you have y like, absolute value of the function absolute y. Where did you get that? Uh, when I differentiate the uh, log of the absolute value of y, I get 1 over y. So the antiderivative of 1 over y is natural log y. Okay. Other questions? Is this OK, everyone? Uh, moving on to the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 from x to the fourth, tangent x dx. Yes, but I have to write two different things. I have to write symmetric interval. If it's not a symmetric interval, and every time I see a symmetric interval, I will think to check if it's odd or even. And the function is odd. Odd function, symmetric interval. Very good. It's odd because tangent odd, right? Perfect. And x to the fourth is even. Yes. So when you plug in negative x, you will get negative x to the fourth times tangent negative x. So this doesn't change. This is still x to the fourth. But this equals negative tangent x. 
from the trig functions, there are only two even functions, cosine and secant. Everything else is odd. So odd trig even trig functions. Odd everything except cosine and secant. So sine, tangent, cotangent, uh, and uh, cosecant. Any function that has sine in it, it's odd. Can you move sine a little bit to the side? Is it even though? It becomes cosine. Very good question. So if you shift, excellent question. If you shift the, the uh, graph of sine, it becomes cosine. Yeah, that's how I would do it. I hope you won't give us a problem like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I may give a, one with a dedication to you. So any function, any trig function that has sine in it, it will always be odd. Any function like these two, these two have only cosine in them, nothing else. Every function that has only cosine is an even function. Good. Uh, next one, the integral from 0 to 3 from 1 over x minus 1 dx. Correct. You either say improper integral or you say calc 2 or you say fundamental theorem of calc calculus is not applicable. You have three answers here. Improper integral, calc 2, in other words, and fundamental theorem of calculus is not applicable. You don't need three answers. Just write one of them. Yes, Ricky? But I have to write FTC, Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, not applicable. And it's because X can't one? Correct. In other words, the function is not continuous on the interval 1, 0 to 3. It's a must condition. Yes. Yes. You don't have to check if they're continuous with like an indefinite integral, right? You cannot check. Yeah. You can, I, I'm sorry, for indefinite integrals, you can always check. For definite integrals, you, you cannot. Okay. So, because simply you're differentiating both sides and you will get the same function. Yeah, but you don't need to know if it's continuous. Oh, that's true. Because you don't have limits of integration. Yes. Right. Oh, yes. That was the question. I'm sorry. Yes. Very good. Okay, next question. Please choose. Uh, B is part of this fourth test. The distance, the derivative is part of this test. Uh, and the midpoint rule. You want to continue with 14? Yes? Okay, let's do 14. So we have the 0 to 16, x plus 1 to the third, tangent, the square root of x plus 3, dx, and we want four subintervals. So let's calculate the area. Okay, so let's look at this for a few minutes, a couple of minutes. Can anyone give us a starting point so everyone is on the right track? So the x is 4, right? but it's starting in the middle interval. So it's like 4 times f of 2 plus f of 6 plus f of 4. Very good. So delta x is 16 minus 0 divided by 4. So the width of each interval is 4. So the area with a midpoint 4 will be 4 multiplied by 
the sum of four terms. What is this? This one right here in the middle. Two. This one in the middle. This one in the middle. Very good. And this one in the middle. Excellent. So then what will you dictate? So please calculate that, and I will do the same. So in the first list, I will put in 2, 6, 10, 14. In the second list at the very top, I will put 4. And then in parentheses, list L1 plus 1, everything to power 3. And then multiply it by tangent. Make sure that uh, your um, calculator is in radian mode. Tangent of the square root. And I'm going to put in parentheses. It may not be required. I don't care. OK, plus 3. Close the parentheses. And close the outside parentheses. And I press Enter. And I get all those numbers. And now I go to stat, and no, not stat, sorry. I go to second and list. Second and list. Operations, and I want the sum uh, in math. I want the sum, which is 5, of list L2. And I got 22524.75891. Did anyone else get the same thing? Yes. Great job. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Any questions on this? Any questions? Yes? Yes? So let's move on to, say it again. Can you just go over to the calculator? Yes. Well, if you're finished, so uh, please continue with part B, the Riemann sum. Oh, do we have one more time? Yes. Yeah. So you want the calculator? Yeah. So let's, let's do it together one more time. So we go to um, stats. Everyone okay? And then press enter. And list L1. So in list L1, we want to edit. And we will plug in 2, 6, 10, and 14. 2, enter, 6, enter, 10, enter, and 14. Do we all have list L1? Yeah. Sure. Yes, everyone? OK, now we go to list L2 at the very top. At the very top, highlight L2. Mm -hmm. Do we all have L2 highlighted? Yes? Mm -hmm. And now we're going to put the function in. So we want each item to be 4 in parentheses we want second and list L1 and we want plus 1 we close the parentheses and we put power 3 I'm looking at the function that's all I'm doing I'm looking at the function the function is x plus 1 to the third and then tangent in parentheses the square root 
of list L1 plus 3, close the parenthesis underneath, and close the parenthesis outside. You may not need to put parenthesis. Oh, oops, 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 oops. So I'm going to do it without a parenthesis, but I really prefer parentheses under the square root. But. OK. Do we all have this? Is L2 highlighted? OK, so now press Enter. And the calculator will perform each and every product base times height, base times height, base times height. But now we want to sum those up. So we get out of there a second and quit. And we go to stats. I'm sorry, second and stats. Go to math. And you see number five is a sum. So call number five. And since our information that we want to sum up is in list L2, just put list L2, close the parenthesis, and press enter. Is this clear? Yes, Vicky? So every time yes? Because that's where the information is. Okay. Each and every x that I want the calculator to plug in is in list L1. And it does it separately. It does it for x1, it does it for x2, it does it for x3, and it does it for x4. Is that better? Everyone caught up? Yes? So can we work now on the Riemann sum? So we're working on the Riemann sum, which is f of x, x squared plus 6, and the interval is 0, 2. Ready? How many preps we need? Three. Very good, awesome. Delta X is the first one. Excellent. So what is it? Yes? Delta X, by definition, is B minus A divided by N. Very good. Prep number two. Very good. By definition, XI is A plus I delta X. In our case, XI will be 0 plus... I over N. Oh. Step 3. What is step 3? F of XI. Can anyone give us F of XI knowing that the function is X squared plus 6? Yes. 4I squared over N squared plus 6. And now we are ready and this is what I would do. It's up to you what you want to do, but I will do this first. I want to see what to expect. I'm not going to make any false statements, but I would like to see it ahead of time, if possible. I would like to have the number. So this is x cubed over 3 plus 6x from 0 to 2. I plug in 2, I get 8 thirds plus 12. And I plug in 0, nothing happens. So this is 8 plus 36 over 3. 44 over 3. This better be my answer with the limit of the Riemann sum. So I know, I know what to expect. Any questions? Any questions? So then the area will be, can anyone dictate? N approaches infinity from the sum through N, very good, from 2 over N, yes, times the function, 4I squared over N squared plus 6. You don't have to skip steps, but it would be nice if we didn't have to write a lot for this, but it's up to you. So the first step would be 
to remove this, it's a constant, it's a factor, and it goes outside. And then, it's not a distributive law, but the sum of two generic terms or general terms is the sum of this plus the sum of this. So this is limit. n approaches infinity 2 over n. And this is the sum from 4i squared over n squared plus the sum of 6. Yes, from i equals 1 through n. Now I have to simplify each sum as much as I can. So now this is a constant, a factor. Now this piece will go in front. This is 6 times 1. So this is a constant, a factor. It goes in front because I know the sum of 1. I have a formula for that. So this is limit. n approaches infinity from 2 over n. Now in brackets, 4 over n squared is outside the sum of i squared. And then plus 6, the sum of 1. From i equals 1 through n, i equals 1 through n. Let's stop for a moment and tell me if you have any questions. We've seen this before, but it doesn't matter. See if you have any doubts or any questions on this. Questions? Are we okay? Are we okay? Yes? Can anyone tell us what to do next? What will be the next step? Replace the sum with the I replace this by? This is the ugly one. Yeah. yeah, it's the n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1 divided by 6. And this one is the n. From this moment on, it's all algebra and eventually L'Hopital's rule. So let's rewrite. Limit n approaches infinity to over n, 4 over n squared times. I recommend before you rewrite it, multiply these two. You will never be able to simplify the n plus 1 and 2n plus 1. So multiply those two, leave the n alone. So it's 2n squared plus 3n plus 2, plus 1. So 2n squared plus 3n plus 1. 2n squared, 2n, and another n, and 1 divided by 6, and then plus 6n, and close the bracket. I will simplify an n from the top with an n from the denominator, and a 2, 4 divided by 2, and 6 divided by 2. Is this okay so far? Is this okay so far? Any questions? Okay. So the next step. Limit. N approaches infinity. 2 over N. The least common denominator is 3n, 3n. I will distribute 2, so it's 4n squared plus 6n plus 2. But then this one needs to be multiplied by 3n because its denominator is 1. So this is plus 18n squared. Combine like terms. So limit n approaches infinity. The denominator is 3n squared. I have a 2. What do we get at the top? We get 22n squared plus 6n and plus 2. Agreed? So now you can say it's infinity over infinity, L'Hopital's rule.
Or you can say, I learned from pre-calc is 43 over 3. Uh, 44 over 3. So which one? Exactly what we obtained 10 minutes ago. L'Hopital's rule? Okay, L'Hopital's rule. So this is 44. N squared plus 12 N plus 6. Uh, I'm sorry, plus 4. That's a 2. Over 3 N squared. So it's infinity over infinity. So this is limit. N approaches infinity from 88 N over 6 N. I simplify. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I can't simplify. Plus 12. Don't simplify, please. We're not allowed to. I just forgot there was a 12 N there. Okay. Again, infinity over infinity. So this is limit. N approaches infinity from 88 over 6, which is 44 over 3. In the second step, that disappears, and the n disappears, and it's 44 over 3. Any questions on this problem? When I differentiate 12, I get 0. We use L'Hopital's rule again because we still had infinity over infinity. The derivative of this is 88. The derivative of this is 6. Which we knew from the very beginning, right? It's 44 over 3 because it's uh, same degree over same degree. So if you remember that and you quoted, you don't have to show these steps. You can say the answer is 44 over 3, same degree over same degree, and I'm fine. You don't have to proceed with L'Hopital's rule. Okay, I should, we should look at the total distance, part C, and the derivative of the function. Do you have any questions? Do you have anything else in mind that you would like to continue with, or is uh, C and D okay? Which one? Which one? Eight. Eight. Yes. So let's do eight, and then the uh, the last two. Okay. So we have sine forty six degrees. I don't care what I'm given. But I know that this is approximately f of x plus f prime of x dx. So no matter what I'm given to determine, I have to remember the f of x plus f prime of x dx. So what do I have to determine? I have to determine f of x. I have to determine x. I have to identify dx and eventually find f prime. So you don't have to look at anything yet. So it's f of x plus f prime of x dx. You have to identify the function. We have to identify x. We will calculate f prime. And we have to identify dx. Is that clear? And now let's look. Let's identify the function first. Which function is in question here? That's it. Can I find the, the derivative right away so I don't have to worry about it? So this is cosine x. Excellent. Good. Now let's identify x. So we have to think in terms of something that is widely known. 45, indeed. 45 degrees. But remember, 45 degrees inside the function, it's OK. But outside of the function, it has to be replaced by pi over 4. So if you write sine 45 or sine pi over 4, it doesn't make any difference. It's the same answer, the square root of 2 over 2. But when you identify dx, you cannot put in degrees. So you have to be careful. So we identify the function. We know uh, x. We have the derivative. Now I have to identify dx. dx is the minor error from what we know. What is the minor error from what we know? Say it again. One degree. Excellent. Thank you. So then dx equals one degree, but it will not be put inside a sine or a cosine or a trig function. It will be outside. Therefore, it has to be replaced by one. One degree has to be replaced in by ra radians, the corresponding in radians. 
That's a must. So now I have everything put together. Although this is the approximate symbol, what I'm going to write is equal to this. So let's put it in. f of x. So that will be sine 45 degrees plus cosine 45 degrees but times dx, which has to be p over 180, pi over 180. So you don't have to perform much calculations. This is square root of 2 over 2 plus the square root of 2 over 2 times pi over 180. I'm fine with this. Yes, you should put in the calculator just to make sure that there is no error. So when you're done, we'll, we'll check the answer. Here, there is no need. You can, if you want, factor out the square root of 2 over 2. There is no need. 1 plus pi over 180. There is no need. This is fine. This is fine. No calculations are required. I'm fine with this for this problem. So then um, we go to sign. And make sure that you are in degrees. In this case, if you want to put... Um, if you want to put... Um, 45 degrees, then you have to make sure that mode is in degree. If not, you put pi, you put pi over 4, the same thing. So sine of uh, 45 degrees, it's, sorry, we want 46. 46 degrees. So this is the number we should get, very close to. And what we have is the square root of 2, I will put parentheses, the square root of 2 outside, divide by 2, close the parenthesis, open another parenthesis, 1 plus pi divided by 180, and close the parenthesis. So you should check, just to make sure that there is no error. Of course there is error, because of this. This is the approximation symbol. This, this does not say equal to. But the error is acceptable. Quite acceptable. Okay, back to... Um, let's look at uh, the derivative. So what about the integral from 2x squared to sine x from tangent of natural log t dt? Here we're not asked to evaluate. We can. There is no such thing. This is a function. We are only asked to find the derivative. But it needs a lot of prep. So what is the prep that we need here? Very good. 2x squared to a point uh, tangent natural log t dt plus from a to sine x tangent natural log t dt. Good, but not good enough. We have one more step. Very good. So this is negative, the integral from a to 2 x squared tangent natural log t dt plus the integral from a to sine x from tangent natural log t dt. So now we can say this is the function g of g prime now. And what do we get? So this was function g of x. So now we want to differentiate it. And what do we get? Negative tangent natural log of 2x squared times, very good, plus tangent of natural log of sine x times cosine x.
if we found dt. So it's like, how do we know square? Okay. So a function can be given in the form of an integral of, from a to x from f of t dt. When we differentiate the left-hand side and we differentiate the right-hand side, all that happens is this goes away, this symbol goes away, and we only plug in x. So the left-hand side is g prime of x, the right-hand side is f of x. However, if this piece is not plain x, it's, for example, 2x squared, then I have to multiply by 4x. Better? Yeah. Very good, Jerry. Go ahead. What does it say? Next to the LN? Tangent LN sine. Okay. Because it's sine up here. Okay. Sorry, my handwriting. I'm sorry. Yeah, I my apologies. I stand and my handwriting is not nice <laughs> anyway, but while I stand, it's even worse. My apologies. Okay, we have time to uh, finish with part C. So let's take a look. So we want to find the total distance, which is the integral from 0 to 6, from the absolute value of 3t minus 6 dt. We have to start by looking at the absolute value of 3t minus 6, which is 3t minus 6 for t greater than or equal to 2 or negative 3t plus 6 for t less than 2. And that's why we will split this integral into two pieces. What is the first piece? And what are the limits of integration? from 0 to 2, very good, from which function? Negative 3t plus 6, and from then from 2 to 6, from which function, of course, from 3t minus 6. So the antiderivative, negative 3t squared over 2 plus 6t from 0 to 2, and 3t squared over 2 minus 6t from 2 to 6. So I'm just going to plug it in. So this is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So this is negative 6 plus 12. There is no point in plugging 0. Plus 36 divided by 2 is 18. So this is 3 times 18 and minus 36. And minus when I plug in 2. So 4 over 2 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. And minus 12. It turned out not to be too bad. So this is 6 plus 54 minus 36. And this is minus 6 or so plus 6. So 54 minus 36, I think it's 18. And 18 plus 12 is 30.